Hello people, booktube, Megan here, and time for a little discussion slash theory video. So I don't typically do theory related videos, I think I've only done one other one in my entire booktube like time, career, whatever you want to refer to it as for the Iron Warrior years ago when it came out, before it came out. Just usually I don't have too much to say on my thoughts on what I think might happen or what I hope to happen or what have you, but with the Court of Silver Flames coming out tomorrow, actually, I'm a little late getting this up, I have quite a lot of thoughts, not necessarily for just that book, but for the remaining part of the Akatar series in general. So these theories, thoughts, musings, whatever you want to call them, don't only apply to A Court of Silver Flames, but for all the other remaining books in the series. Because honestly, I don't think I have enough thoughts on just A Court of Silver Flames to make this a worthwhile video. So, here we go, let's just jump right into it. And before I go much further in this video, please, no Court of Silver Flames spoilers in the comments. I know the book comes out tomorrow, but I, myself, as well as many people, probably aren't going to get their copies right away, can't get their copies right away for whatever reason. I personally ordered my book through Books A Million because I want the Asriel point of view. There's no Books A Million near me, so it's going to be shipped, and I'm probably not going to get my copy until the end of the week. So... I personally don't want to get spoiled. I know many people out there also probably don't want to get spoiled. So please, no confirming or denying any theories down in the comments. No Court of Silver Flame spoilers. Any spoilers that I see will be deleted. That is my one request. And also, not that I think it's going to happen or I hope it doesn't happen, but no fighting in the comments, please. No bashing anyone for their theories or their like or dislike to a character. I know Nesta definitely has a lot of lover or hater feels of mine. Like, people either love her or hate her very passionately. Please, no fighting in the comments with that. Be polite. Any fighting I see, I will be deleting. Just be civil. That is all. So, I'm pretty, like, set in thinking that Cassian and Nesta are gonna be together, they are meant to be together, I think they work together well, but I keep flip-flopping on how I want the whole Lucian, Elaine, Asriel deal to go. Like, I just finished rereading the whole series up until Court of Frost and Starlight, and with each new addition to my reread, I just kept flip-flopping. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure in my past reviews for the series, I was die hard like Asriel and Elaine. Though, you know, I also want Lucian to get his happiness too. I just didn't think it was with Elaine. But after doing some rereading, I'm like, you know, I'm still not sure how I feel about them as a couple, even though they are mates. But I'm like, you know, they could have potential together. So I wouldn't. This is kind of like one of those weird, like, situations where I'm fine with like no matter who ends up with who as long as everyone is happy so really at this point I'm not like die hard one way or the other like Lucian and Elaine could be cute I love just the interactions with Elaine and Azrael we have gotten just I do think they are very cute but at the same time I do think Azrael could do better just during my reread, I felt I was getting really annoyed with Elaine and how she really didn't do much of anything when they, her and her sisters were suffering through poverty. Like, Nesta, she didn't do as much as Feyre either, but at least she, you know, went out to chop wood when she had to and she wasn't perfect either. Don't get me wrong. But Elaine just... I have feelings. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where this like little triangle goes. At this point in the game, I'm probably leaning slightly more towards Elaine ending up with no one. Like, I feel she has gone through so much that a relationship should be far from the first thing at the front of her mind. Like everyone in this series at this point, Elaine has dealt with trauma. 
this trauma is still very fresh and she just isn't handling it quite as well as she could and I don't think throwing a relationship her way is the healthiest way to go about it. I think that she needs to stand on her own and figure out herself as a person before she should dive into a relationship. Mate or no mate. Asriel, I think, he deserves someone to make him happy. I'm, like I said, I'm flip-flopping at this point between whether Elaine would be that person for him or not, or whether she's too quiet and meek for him, or whether his job, his past would be too much for her to handle. Because yeah, while they're sweet and everything, she, I feel, doesn't know the full scope of Azrael, who he is, his past and whatnot, and that might be a little too overwhelming for her just based on how she is as a character at the moment. As for Lucian, I also feel like there are definitely bits of him and Elaine that just don't mesh well personality, history-wise. Honestly, just after rereading Aquar, I feel him and Vasa would be a better pairing than Lucian and Elaine. I just feel Vasa has more fire to her, like, she has a stronger personality, which I feel would be better suited for Lucian. Just, I feel potential chemistry between them could be better. And also just, I feel, I notice a lot of people's like complaints with Elaine and Asriel ending up together with all the Archerian sisters. Is that how you say their last name? I'm blanking. Ending up with a member of the Bat Boys being really cheesy and cliche. I don't really care about that either way, as long as the characters, you know, the matches work, the personalities work, and the characters are happy at the end of the day. As a reader, that's what I care about. Though I think, you know, the whole cheesy aspect of all of them ending up with one of the Illyrians is, I can see where that concern is coming from. So I guess that kind of drives my feelings towards, you know, none of this trio ending up with each other, like Lucian... Lucian maybe ending up with Vasa, Asriel ending up with someone else, and Elaine either just taking time for herself or coming across someone else. Also, just, I feel it's it would be big and important for at least one member of this group to reject the mating bond. It was mentioned it was an option that could happen in the books. I can't remember which one. I think it was Akawar. And I feel mentioning something like that and not using it, not having it happen at least once wouldn't make sense. Like one big thing my creative writing teacher taught me in my community college class was if there's a gun on a table, it has to go off. If you mention something, it has to have a point to it. You don't just throw out random things that don't contribute to the story. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of words, and it's just why would you do that? And it was mentioned, so I feel it only makes sense at least one of the sisters or one of the inner circle rejects the mating bond. And out of all the characters, I feel Elaine rejecting the mating bond makes the most sense at the moment given what we have. I just felt like I did a huge ass rant making things much longer than they should be. I am so sorry. Another thing that came to mind with Asriel and his feelings towards Moor, part of me wonders if he is in love with Moor Aaron, so infatuated with her because he knows it would never happen. Like she is a, if he feels she is a safe bet to pine after because he knows she will never return her feelings. Like on some base level, he knows Moore is not in love with him, she doesn't have those feelings for him, and therefore he feels it's safe to feel these things towards her. And in knowing that, even if it's super deep down, he feels this way because there's a safety to it. Like because Moore will never have that kind of relationship with him, he doesn't have to feel being hurt in that way. If that makes sense, just, I don't know how true that is. I don't know if I'm reading far too into things. I don't know, I just, 
When I was reading it, I felt it was really strange that a spy master, someone who is supposed to be like really observant and just big on reading people, and in addition to his age, and him not realizing that more just isn't into him. Not in like a relationship kind of way. Just, I find that really hard to believe. So I wonder if it's just kind of him being stubborn and being like, this is the safest thing for me to do. In a way to kind of protect himself from being hurt on a deeper level of facing rejection for someone he could genuinely have a loving relationship with. I don't know if I'm phrasing this right. I That's the best way I can get this thought into words. But... I don't know, let me know if I'm making sense or not, because I genuinely don't know. But yeah, that's just a little thought I have, and if I am totally off, I hope in the coming books that he is able to move on from these feelings towards more, and more is able to live her truth. You know, I also want more to find someone that she can love. And I have a feeling that will happen when she goes to the continent, and just, she... She needs her happiness too. And just also with rereading everything, I definitely feel like I can really emphasize with Nesta. Like, out of my part of the family, I am the oldest sibling. I am the oldest daughter. And growing up, me and my brothers have not had the easiest time. We have dealt with loss, some trauma. And in reading Nesta, I feel I can relate to that. By no means do I condone Nesta's behavior, but I can understand it to a point. Do I think that she is a raging bitch some of the time? Hell freaking yeah. But like I said, I can understand. As an older sister trying to set an example for my younger brothers during rough times, I felt I need to be strong. I need to put on a brave face to give them a strong example to look up to to help them keep it together. I felt like I had to be the strong one. And while that didn't make me a raging bitch like Nesta, it's, I can see how things could make her how she is. She has a hard time showing her emotions, relate, very much relate. Has a hard time showing her vulnerabilities, also can relate. <laughs> so just, well, I feel me and her definitely expressed our situations differently. There are things that are similar. And after everything that happened in Akawar and at the end of A Court of Mist and Fury, I can understand her not being super open with the inner circle. I see where she is coming from. She agreed to help her sister try and help everyone and then her and Elaine got burned for it. I can understand that bitterness. She and her sister were turned against their will into creatures that they feared and hated. Not exactly a fun time. So with all that, I really don't fully understand the Nesta hate that goes on. Like, is she the most likable character? Hell no. But that's what I like about her as a reader myself. Both that and relate to the whole older sister being strong yada 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 thing and just she's having a hard time coping with trauma like everyone else in the inner circle she has dealt with trauma she has dealt with a lot in such a short period of time and she's having trouble processing it like i said earlier does that mean i condone her actions nah not at all but i see where she's coming from and I definitely hope to see in A Court of Silver Flames her coming to terms and dealing and processing with this trauma. And I hope that she grows as a person from it and stops pushing everybody away. Like, out of the sis three sisters, Nessa definitely is a more private person. She doesn't want all these people all up in her face, all up in her business, trying to help her. She, she needs time, she needs less people getting up in her business. And to a point, I can even see her being unwilling to accept Feyre's help because seeing how happy and well put together her sister is, 
I can see her maybe even feeling like it's a slap in the face. Seeing how well Farah is doing after the trauma she dealt with while she herself is still floundering. But yeah, moving on. Something a little more unrelated but just kind of clicked to me. Um, I believe in a live stream somewhere Sarah had said that she cut like a threesome scene out of A Court of Silver Flames. This we will probably never got, get confirmation for unless Sarah says something. But just a random thought that came up in my head as I was rereading and remembering that it made me wonder between that and the whole dancing scene little snippet that we got on I think it was Instagram with Nesta and Eris dancing it made me wonder if that scene was between Cassian Eris and Nesta I don't know why that just came into my that just kind of popped up into my head and I felt the need to share. I felt the need to share because I saw a lot of different theories for who it would have been between. I didn't see many people saying that, so that's my thoughts. Like I said, we'll probably never find out unless Sarah says something. But that is what I say. And speaking of Eris, it, I want to know if we... Well, chances are good we are definitely going to be seeing more of him based on that dancing little snippet that we got. But... I want to know just how much of his story, his actual story, we are going to get. Because, what was it, in Akawar, he, I can't remember, like, the exact instances, but he was saying things weren't as how they were. Like, he helped Lucian escape the Autumn Court to spring, got word to Tamlin anonymously that he should be at his borders at that right time, and just little things that he wouldn't have been the bad guy that Moore painted him out to be if they had gotten married. And it just made me really wonder who the real heiress is and if we'll ever get to see some of that. And it just, it makes me curious. I just want to know. It made me so much more interested in his character. As of right now, I don't have much thoughts on what I think will be up with the Queens or Jurin. Jurian, I can't remember how to say his name now. Oh my god, what the hell. But I'm curious to see what unfolds with those guys as well. I mean, in Aquara Frost and Starlight, Lucian, Valsa, and Jurian seem to have like a tight knit little group going there. What was it? The Court of Exiles, they called themselves. So I'm, I'm curious to see what becomes of all of them. Also how and when Lucian finds out that his dad is Hellion, just that is gonna be such an interesting revelation. I very much look forward to that. And also just the aftermath of everyone finding out because that's not something that's gonna stay hush hush for long. Especially if I saw some people theorizing that Lucian will find out, like, Helene will die, and that's how he and everyone finds out. I hope that's not the case, because while that would be interesting to read, oh my god, <laughs> that kind of drama. Well, just, actually, that would be amazing to read. That would be very entertaining, but I'm like, how would I really feel about that? And, yeah. All I really have left to say is I very much look forward to reading A Court of Silver Flames. I am so curious to see things from Nesta's point of view, especially her view of the inner circle. Because I have a feeling it, I know there are some chapters leaked. Haven't read them, have no intention of reading them. I can wait until I get my copy of the book. But, and I'm going out of my way to avoid spoilers so I haven't seen anything on that. But I am just so curious to see her portrayal, her perspective of the inner circle. And just based on how she is, it probably isn't going to be in the best light. Which is fair. From her point of view, they aren't... She doesn't have the attachment to them that Feyre does. So naturally, it's not going to be the brightest of feelings. Yeah, I'm just really curious to see Nesta's perspective of things. And yeah, I don't think I have much more I want to say. So for anyone still watching, what are some theories that you have? 
What are some things that you hope to see? What are some things that you are dreading you might see? Let me know. Let's get discussion going. Like I said at the beginning of the video, please let's avoid doing spoilers for Quarter Silver Flames in the comments. Many people aren't going to be able to get their copies for a while yet, so let's keep those people in mind and keep the uh, comment sections Quarter Silver Flames spoiler free. But you know, the first three and then Quarter Frost and Starlight spoilers are fair game. So yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.